Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 54. This training tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at setting up our engine rev limiting programming within our Elite system. This is going to go over uh, getting up to the limiter, the different cut types, programming a strategy within the limiter so we have a smooth and predictable style limiter. We have a lot of details to cover here. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with programming or rev limiters within our Haltech Elite using our NSP software. We can go and configure our limiters in a variety of different ways. We can do fuel cut, we can do spark cut, we can do a combination of both. We can have a soft cut limiter, we can have a hard cut limiter, or we can have a specific cut type that we program. We also can offset our fuel and spark timing as we're coming up to the limiter. And then when we're actually programming our limiter, we can do it based on a variety of different applications or channels here. We can do it based on coolant temperature for an overheating protection. We can base it on gear position. If we want to do something gear based, such as an autocross car, you might not have different limiters per gear. There's all kinds of ways we can implement our rev limiters. Let's take a look at where we can find programming this and then just walk through a couple different examples of programming limiters based on the engine that we're working with. So let's jump in here. I'm going to move from my fuel tuning page over into my main page right here. Going into my navigation screen and working my way down to engine functions, we're going to find here that we want to go in to our protection and make sure that we have our main RPM limiter enabled. This is going to make sure that we actually have a rev limiter in place. You don't want to run your engine without a rev limiter because you can overspin your engine and easily mechanically damage it. Now, when we're programming our limiter, we can go in here to our main limiter and we can go and access the bits of information to program our cut type and the cut method we're working with and also where we want our cut RPM to be at. Let's first talk about our RPM and then we'll talk about our cut method and cut type and discuss those details. Let's go here to end RPM. The end RPM is going to be the actual RPM limiter where you want that to happen at. We can see right now, this is programmed here at 8,000 RPM. This is just a singular basic rev limiter. This is saying that I don't want the engine to go past 8,000. Now, if it does, it can either cut fuel or spark or a combination of both and it can do it either soft or hard cut type of method, which we specify up here. Let's dig into this table a little bit further because we generally want to go in and have the table configured at least as a two-dimensional table. This is a one-dimensional table, or we can even go in and configure it based on three dimensions. So let's deal with that. I'm going to go in first and just do a two-dimensional table. So I'm going to go to enable axes and we can see coolant temperature is th one thing we can base this table on, and that's usually what the Haltech base maps are going to be starting off with. That's a good way to base your RPM limiter. Let's go and just populate the table real quick and talk about putting some values in there that make sense. So jumping into my table, I'll put a value here at 68 degrees. I'll put another one at 100. Let's do 140. Let's do 180. Let's do 220. And then we'll go a little bit past that. I'm going to consider my engine to be overheating much past 220 degrees. I'll put a point here at 225 and then one here at 250. And then we'll click OK. Now looking at the table, we see that it's set all for 8,000 RPM. When I'm in a cold engine, I don't want to rev the engine up to 8,000. Let's say that's the peak limiter I want to put my engine at. Maybe I want to go in and bring my engine speed down. So I want to allow the engine to warm up before I start to drive it hard. In that situation, I could put my limiter at a lower RPM at something like 5,000. Now at 100 degrees coolant temperature, I might want to go and allow it to rev a little bit higher than that. Maybe something like 6,000. Once I get up to about 140, 180, 220 degrees, this is going to be the band where I'm considering the engine to be warmed up. I don't have to worry about uh, piston scuffing or any kind of tolerance problem with the engine as it's starting to come up to operating temperature where we don't want to rev it so high. So this is where I'm considering my normal limiter for the engine. Now, when you're programming a rev limiter, I like to put my limiter about 500 RPMs above where I've made peak power out of the engine. Now, that may not always be the case. So if you're finding that the engine mechanically can only rev to something like 8,000 or something like 7,500, you wouldn't be able to go put it 500 RPMs above. So in the case if, I, if, if it was a stock engine and let's say I was making power to 7,500, I probably would want to put that rev limiter maybe a little bit higher than the stock values, 76, 7,700, unless I knew for sure the engine could spin at a higher engine speed with the stock components. The stock mechanical components can fail if they're overspun and every engine's a little bit different. Now, if you've built the engine with stronger internals, upgraded valve train, you can usually rev the engine much higher. In that case, usually set this 500 RPMs above your peak power to give you better shift recovery. That'll be pretty good for any engine, just kind of a rule of thumb. 
So in this case, if I'm making peak power to 75, I can put my limiter 8,000. Now, as the engine's starting to rev, or as the engine's starting to run, I should say, and the coolant temperature's starting to pick up a little bit, it's getting a little bit warm. 250 would be completely overheating. I can damage the head gasket, I can damage the engine running at that hot. So I wanna limit the engine if it's getting up to that higher temperature. So I'm gonna say here, I'll limit the engine to 3,000 RPM. That's gonna be pretty obnoxious in terms of drivability. I'm not gonna be able to- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't wanna miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.